a short video about the project that I'm working on. It's a long wave radio oscillator. Here is how it is made and it was also in an earlier video, the most recent video, say a few days ago, etc, etc, where I showed more or less the basics. And this is the schematic. I made this circuit in the past with an NPN transistor, but because uh, the coil has to be connected to ground minus mass, I use now a BC557B, that is a PMP transistor, so that I could get the coil grounded, the tuning coil, that's important. And the tuning coil is here at the moment. This is, by the way, the first, this one, is the first of a few tuning cars that I'm going to make. Uh, this will be the range. The first coil is here now, between 145 and 167 kilo cycles and more uh, coils will follow. Here is the decoupling unit. I've paid much attention in an earlier video. Anyway, so schematic again. Uh, and here how it works. At the moment we are on, hope it's visible, 167 kilohertz. And we have this waveform. I think it's good, good enough for a super heterodyne radio, but of course you can also use such a uh, VLF radio oscillator for all kinds of other purposes. Testing radios, uh, whatever. So, um, my camera has to adapt a little bit to the light schematic. Uh, and here is my first coil, like I told, and now I turn the knob of the tuning cap. And you can surely see here that the waveform changes, not the frequency changes. And here it's also visible. This lamp is a little bit too fierce. Anyway. Let me show it. It goes from 144 kilo cycles to approximately 167 kilo cycles. And that's what I wanted to use, want to use in, in new experiments. Try to make a VLF radio with uh, down mixing. It didn't, did not work very good, so now I want to use up mixing and that means that a local oscillator that has to do the job uh, must work in a quite low frequency band and that's here 145 to 167. You can set the oscillation with the potentiometer uh, here 1k5. Let me show it how it works. Now I'm going to tune it here. It sets both the oscillation and, and also in, in a certain way the waveform and in a certain way the frequency. So let's see. And the distortion of course. Now we have another waveform. So here it, almost, here it doesn't oscillate. Here it starts a little bit oscillation. And we are on 205 kilohertz. Kilo cycles. But of course we must always say search for the purest waveform and that potentiometer here can be set to that purest waveform. Um, about the coil, well, uh, there's always say an issue in, uh, in radio amateurs, with radio amateurs, about, the, about coils, how they can be made, etc, etc. Well, uh, this is a coil that is in the order of 470 microhenry, perhaps even 600, perhaps even 1 millihenry. I'm not 
completely sure about it, but this is a good, uh, say, uh, ID example of the type of coil that works with this setup. And then I mean this schematic. So this is a type of coil. Many windings, say 200 windings, a pair, 190 windings, etc. etc. And of course that's experimental. Uh, I only talk now about say experimental things. But anyway, you can try. This capacitor is important. It sets the pureness of the waveform, the value of that cap, that's what I mean. You can try between uh, 270 picofarad and say 600 picofarad, 700 picofarad. Uh, it sets in a certain way the pureness of the waveform and perhaps you can see a little bit what what it corrects. Here there is say kind of small bubble and that bubble disappears when the frequency goes up and when you search the proper value for this capacitor. So thanks for watching. First ID of such an oscillator. Very easy to make. Say it always works. And there is uh, there are a lot of jokes uh, when talking about uh, radio oscillators. Say the oscillator doesn't oscillate. That's a common joke uh, uh, in radio amateurism. And when the local oscillator doesn't oscillate in a superheterodyne radio, you will receive nothing or almost nothing. Anyway, thanks for watching again. Pen over somewhat how I made it. Uh, this is aluminum. To the back side, there is tin plate glued. Uh, you can see it tin plate. Reason is that aluminum does not shield so very well. Steel is the best material to shield electronic circuits. So that's the reason why I've used here tin plate at the back side. So that when I touch with my hand here the knob, the frequency doesn't change when I move my hand to the radio. That is the so called hand effect. And when you are a little bit acquainted with radio technology and radio problems, you will surely know what it means. Thanks for watching.